Welcome to a thunderous new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. And what better way to celebrate this holiday season than by talking about a demon who so perfectly captures the feelings in the air of winter, joy, and excitement. Oh, right. Uh, him. Well, today we're talking about Odin. Many people know Odin as the Allfather, the head honcho in Norse mythology, the big guy with the big spear and the big beard, which is actually absent in most of his Megaton designs. But the reason why I chose to talk about Odin for the holiday episode of the Demonic Compendium is because Odin is in fact that spirit of the season, Santa Claus. What's the first thing you think about when you think about Santa? Okay, what's the second thing? Right. Most people tend to think about Santa as the traditional, lovable, jolly, fat man, and I love this depiction of Santa, but a lot of his older designs, especially from Europe, Santa tended to resemble Odin a bit more by looking like this. There have been a lot of sources discussing the connection between Odin and Santa, so I won't dive too deep into it, but just to go over some of the quick similarities, both hail from icy northern kingdoms, both have been known to command elves, both are famous for incredible magic and incredible beards, though Odin's is missing in most of his Megaton designs, and before the eight reindeer became the norm, Santa rode a horse. The eight reindeer probably connects to Odin's horse, Sleipnir, having eight legs. Odin has had quite a few descriptions to his mythology in the games, most covering his status as the father of the gods in Norse mythology. His Soul Hacker's Compendium entry reads, In Norse lore, he is the father of the gods, as well as the god of wisdom. He rides his eight-legged horse, Sleipnir, wields his spear, Gungnir, and wears the ring, Dropnir. He freely sacrificed an eye to drink from the Well of Wisdom. He also welcomes the souls of warriors to Valhalla. Odin has had a lot of different designs over the course of the Megami Tensei franchise, his first appearance ever being in the original Digital Devil story, Megami Tensei, where he was a muscular bearded man carrying an axe. This design doesn't really connect to Odin too much, but this was a Famicom game from 1987. So back then, Odin was actually just an altered sprite that he shared with two other demons. It wasn't until the original Shin Megami Tensei when we got the design that most people are a bit more familiar with. That poor, beardless design most people are familiar with. Though I think it's worth noting that in his official artwork for Megami Tensei 2, Odin was shown with his beard fully intact. One of the most obvious touches of Odin's design here is his missing eye, which many people know he gave up to drink from the Well of Wisdom. And if you didn't know that, why not? I literally said it earlier in this video when I was reading his compendium entry. Come on, Jeremy, the rest of the class is on page 42. Kaneko's design of Odin probably relates to his description in the book from the Prode Edda, which states that Odin will enter the battle at Ragnarok wearing a gold helmet, an impressive cloak of mail, and carrying Gungnir. All three of these elements are depicted in Odin's design. Odin is also one of the few demons in the franchise to have a family resemblance to another demon in the series, as he shares a resemblance to Loki, who also has a head topped with gold, a naked purple body, and a white cloak. Though many fans prefer Loki's Soul Hacker's design, where he has virtually no resemblance to Odin. Speaking of Soul Hackers, Odin himself got a redesign for that game, and come on, you can't tell me Kaneko wasn't channeling Santa in this design. He's got the big white beard, the red and white cloak, bam, Santa. Get ready when he greets you at the gates of Val Ho Ho Hala. <clears throat> anyway, I really like his Soul Hackers design, and I'm a little surprised it hasn't made much of a comeback in the franchise yet. Also, Odin appears in Last Bible, where he kinda looks like Batman. I don't have anything extra to add to that, I just thought it was fun. As far as game history goes, Odin has been a part of this franchise since the beginning, and he's had a lot of roles throughout the different series. So for this segment, I'm just gonna focus on the ones that I think are the most noteworthy. In Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, Odin gets a special conversation with Loki should you ever have the two converse. Odin gives the player side quests in both Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey and Shin Megami Tensei 4. In Strange Journey, he requests the player bring him a Sleipnir, and in return will give him the Odin Ring, which restores MP while walking around, a very useful item. In Shin Megami Tensei 4, Odin actually appears to the player as an old man who has lost his memories. Once the player helps Odin regain them through a battle against his son Thor, he tells Flynn that he'll be welcome in Valhalla. Well, that's swell of him. In regards to Shin Megami Tensei 4, Odin has been confirmed to have a story role in the upcoming sequel, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Final, as one of the leaders of Krishna's Super Friends team of deities. His exact role hasn't been revealed yet, nor do we know if there will be any mention of his part in the first Shin Megami Tensei 4, but his design shows us that... <laughs> he looks like something straight out of Ultraman! Ultrodin! <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. This new design was tackled by Masayuki Doi, who's been taking over Kaneko's role as character and demon designer in the series. His new design here does incorporate some interesting aspects of Odin. He still has his helm, missing eye, cloak, and spear, 
but now they've also given him one of his ravens. His spear is also engraved with Nordic runes, a few examples of which stand for ice, ride, and of course, gift. Because he's Santa. Odin has had quite the interesting run in the Persona series as well, appearing in every Persona RPG to date, always appearing as a member of the Emperor Arcana. This meant that he actually had an affinity towards the protagonist in the first Persona game. Odin has had several strong connections in Persona 3. Being unlocked as a reward for completing the Emperor Social Link with Hidetoshi Odagiri, he's the only Persona in the game to naturally learn Thunder Rain, the most powerful electric attack, and in battle can perform the fusion skill Valhalla if the player also has a Valkyrie with them. Aside from his use in battle, Odin can be fused with a weapon to grant the player his Gungnir Spear, the second best spear in the game and unlocking Odin's heart rewards the player with his Dropnir Ring, an accessory that doubles the power of healing effects. Persona 4 removed a lot of what Odin had to offer, but he was still the reward for completing the Emperor Social Link with Kanji Tatsumi. An interesting thing about this game is that his stats as well as elemental affinities have changed quite a bit from Persona 3. He's much higher level this time around, and while Odin used to be weak to wind and absorb electricity, in Persona 4 Odin has conquered his weakness to wind, but is now weak to fire. It's possible this change in his attributes and strength could be a subtle hint from the Persona team about Odin having to deal with Ragnarok. Odin no longer learns Thunder Rain in this game, instead learning the most powerful single-target wind attack, Pantaray. Unlike Persona 3, these special skills can no longer be transferred through fusion, so Odin will be your only Persona to carry this skill. Thunder Rain is actually learned by Thor this time around, so I guess in those two years, Odin decided to hand the reins off to Thor. <clears throat> One of the last noteworthy appearances of Odin comes from Devil Survivor 2, where Odin is unlocked by reaching Fate Rank 3 with Fumi Kano. Alongside Agaras, these two demons connected to Fumi are both mythological figures symbolic with wisdom and intelligence, two fields that Fumi cares strongly about. Odin has appeared in almost every series in the Megami Tensei franchise, and is usually depicted as a very powerful and unique demon. But what would you expect? He's Santa for crying out loud! At his very lowest, Odin has always been at least level 30, and at his highest in Last Bible, he was level 85. It's no surprise that Odin is often one of the best demons in the franchise. So there you have it, Odin Claws, the spear-wielding spirit of the season. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's gonna do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.